Sedaka or staka in classical Hebrew, Hebrew zadik is a Hebrew word literally meaning justice or righteousness, but commonly used to signify charity. Notably, this concept of charity is different from the modern Western understanding of charity, which is typically understood as a spontaneous act of goodwill and a marker of generosity, as sedaka is rather an ethical obligation. In Judaism, tzedakah refers to the religious obligation to do what is right and just, which Judaism emphasizes as an important part of living a spiritual life. Thus, unlike voluntary philanthropy, tzedakah is seen as a religious obligation that must be performed regardless of one's financial standing, and is considered mandatory even for those of limited financial means. More broadly, tzedakah is considered to be one of the three main acts that can positively influence an unfavorable heavenly decree. The word sedaka is based on the Hebrew, zadik zedek meaning righteousness, fairness or justice, and is related to the Hebrew word zadik, meaning righteous as an adjective or righteous individual as a noun in the form of a substantive. Although the word appears 157 times in the Masoretic text of the Hebrew Bible, typically in relation to «righteousness» per se, its use as a term for «charity» in the above sense is an adaptation of Rabbinic Judaism in Talmudic times. In the Middle Ages, Maimonides conceived of an eight-level hierarchy of tzedakah, where the highest form is to give a gift, loan, or partnership that will result in the recipient becoming self-sufficient, instead of living upon others. In his view, the second highest form of tzedakah is to give donations anonymously to unknown recipients. Topic: <laughs> Precedents in ancient Israel. The Hebrew Bible teaches the obligation to aid those in need, but does not employ one single term for this obligation. The term zedekah occurs 157 times in the Masoretic text, typically in relation to «righteousness» per se, usually in the singular, but sometimes in the plural zedekot, in relation to acts of charity. In the Septuagint this was sometimes translated elamasin almsgiving. In rabbinical literature of the Classical and Middle Ages In classical rabbinical literature, it was argued that the biblical regulations concerning leftovers only applied to corn fields, orchards, and vineyards, and not to vegetable gardens. The classical rabbinical writers were much stricter in regard to who could receive the remains. It was stated that the farmer was not permitted to benefit from the gleanings, and was not permitted to discriminate among the poor, nor try to frighten them away with dogs or lions the farmer was not even allowed to help one of the poor to gather the leftovers. However, it was also argued that the law was only applicable in Canaan, Jerusalem Talmud. Pia 2 5 Although many classical rabbinical writers who were based in Babylon observed the laws there, Hullin 134b, it was also seen as only applying to Jewish paupers, but poor non-Jews were allowed to benefit for the sake of civil peace. Gittin 59b. Maimonides lists his eight levels of giving, as written in the Mishnah Torah, Hilkot Matanot Aniyim, laws about giving to poor people, chapter 10 to 7 minus 14. Giving an interest-free loan to a person in need, forming a partnership with a person in need, giving a grant to a person in need, finding a job for a person in need, so long as that loan, grant, partnership, or job results in the person no longer living by relying upon others. Giving sedaka anonymously to an unknown recipient via a person or public fund which is trustworthy, wise, and can perform acts of sedaka with your money in a most impeccable fashion. Giving sedaka anonymously to a known recipient. Giving sedaka publicly to an unknown recipient. Giving sedaka before being asked. Giving adequately after being asked. Giving willingly, but inadequately. Giving in sadness. Giving out of pity. It is thought that Maimonides was referring to giving because of the sad feelings one might have in seeing people in need, as opposed to giving because it is a religious obligation. Other translations say. Giving unwillingly. Topic in practice. In practice, most Jews carry out tzedakah by donating a portion of their income to charitable institutions or to needy people that they may encounter. The perception among many modern-day Jews is that if donation of this form is not possible, the obligation of tzedakah still requires that something be given. 
Traditional Jews commonly practice Mazar Kesafim, tithing 10% of their income to support those in need. Special acts of tzedakah are performed on significant days. At weddings, Jewish brides and bridegrooms would traditionally give to charity, to symbolize the sacred character of the marriage. At Passover, a major holiday in Jewish tradition, it is traditional to be welcoming towards hungry strangers and feed them at the table. At Purim, it is considered obligatory for every Jew to give food to one other person and gifts to at least two poor people, in an amount that would equate to a meal each, for the purpose of increasing the total happiness during the month. As for the more limited form of tzedakah expressed in the biblical laws, namely the leaving of gleanings from certain crops, the Shulchan Aruch argues that during the exile Jewish farmers are not obliged to obey it. Nevertheless, in modern Israel, rabbis of Orthodox Judaism insist that Jews allow gleanings to be consumed by the poor and by strangers, and all crops not just gleanings by anyone and everyone free, not bought nor sold during sabbatical years. In addition, one must be very careful about how one gives out tzedakah money. It is not sufficient to just give to anyone or any organization, rather, one must check the credentials and finances to be sure that your sedica money will be used wisely, efficiently and effectively. Do not steal from a poor person, for s he is poor." Proverbs 22 verse 22 and from Talmudic era commentaries including Numbers Rabbah 5–2. It is taught that tzedakah money was never yours to begin with, rather, it always belongs to God, who merely entrusts you with it so that you may use it properly. Hence it is your obligation to ensure that it is received by those deserving of it. There are many examples of tzedakah funds that operate according to Maimonides' principles above particularly number two, including hands-on tzedakah working with non-profits in the U.S. and in Israel, and Mitzvah Heroes Fund working mainly with non-profits in Israel. Pa'amonim is a non-profit organization in Israel that operates according to Maimonides' first principle. Gaon of Vilna considered about giving tzedakah to all householders in our city with tax benefit. <laughs> Analogies in Islam The term is similar with sadaka or sadka Arabic, esedkord and Islamic term meaning, "...voluntary charity". But since sadaka means an obligatory due to pay for the poor, then its actual Arabic counterpart is, "...zakat", not sadka. Only the financially capable Muslims have to do zakat, it goes to seven or eight categories starting with the poor Muslims and heavily indebted ones, etc. Gallery See also Charity virtue. Charity practice. Gleaning Sadiqah and Zakat Islam. Social justice Qard al-Hassan References Bibliography Dosik, Rabbi Wayne Living Judaism – The Complete Guide to Jewish Belief, Tradition, and Practice. ISBN 9780060621789. External links Sedeca at Judaism 101 Sedeca at Chabad Sedeca at My Jewish Learning